The Pelton turbine is invented by Lester Allen Pelton in the 1870s. It was the first time the energy in the water converted to power in most efficient manner. Due to its simplicity, the Pelton turbine is the most widely used water turbine in the world. Pelton wheels are the preferred turbine for hydropower, when the available water source has relatively high hydraulic head at low flow rates. The efficiency of this turbine's increases with water head. There are 200 megawatt Pelton turbines in operation where water head exceeds 1000 meters. Small Pelton turbines with enough water flow can operate as low as 15 meter water head. Pelton turbine converts the potential energy in water to kinetic energy in the nozzle. Therefore they are impulse type turbines, which the water strikes the turbine blades with high velocity. For example for the water head of 1000 meter the jet velocity coming from the nozzle could be 135 meter per second. Here is an actual wheel of a Pelton turbine which is almost has 2 meter diameter. The spoon-shaped buckets shown in here are bolted to the main discs of the wheel. The buckets are designed in such a way that, it splits the water jet into two parts, and each part of the jet make a U-turn in both sides of the wheel. Also notice the tip of the buckets, where a round open section, combined with the groove at the back of the bucket, allows the water to strike the right bucket to produce maximum power. The buckets of these kind turbines could be as much as 150 kg. Assuming that the average wheel has 20 buckets, the total weight of the buckets around the rim of the wheel reaches to 3 ton. This makes whole wheel act like a very large flywheel. Since the water head is fixed, the power output of the turbine is controlled by adjusting volumetric rate of water. In the Pelton turbine this is accomplished by moving the spear, or sometimes called the needle, back and forth by a servo mechanism. Notice that how the diameters of the water jet get smaller or larger depending on the position of the spear. If flow rate goes to zero, the wheel keep turning such a long time due to flywheel effect generated by heavy buckets. To prevent the wheel rotating such a long time braking flow is used. A small water jet is sent to the back of the buckets to break the rotation of the wheel. If there is sudden power rejection in the system needle may not have enough time to adjust the position to reduce the amount of water flow. This causes the wheel to begin to turn almost twice the regular rotation speed which could be dangerous for the operation of the turbine. To prevent this, system senses increased speed and activates deflector mechanism to deflect the water to discharge pipe and prevent the turbine from damage. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel and give a thumb up to our video. Thank you. Three major types of water turbines. The Pelton turbine requires large water head and low flow rate, and the Kaplan turbines require low water head but large flow rate. The Pelton turbines usually build in mountainous regions, while the Kaplan turbines are located in lowlands. These restrictions make these two kind turbines less common than the Francis turbine. The Francis turbine fills a large gap between the Pelton and Kaplan and it is widely used. They operate in water head from 10 to 600 meters, and primarily used for electric power generation. Their power output can be calculated from the water head and flow rate and typically range from 10 to more than 700 megawatts. One of the distinct advantages of the Francis turbine with respect to other water turbine is that, they can also be used as water pump. This makes them ideal for the pump storage systems. This animation shows the operation of a Francis turbine in a dam. The arrows show the water path and direction inside the dam. The water from reservoir behind the dam transferred to the turbine by a penstock. The penstock diameter of a Francis turbine could be as large as 10 meters. The water coming from the penstock is transferred to the inlet scroll, which distributes the water equally around the wicket gates. 
water passes through the wicket gates, which controls the amount of water passing through the turbine, before reaching to the runner. This in effect controls the power output of the dam. Wicket gates also adjust the angle of the water reaching to the runner. After passing through the wicket gates, the water reaches to the runner. The water pressure forces the runner to rotate. The rotation speed of the runner can be in the range of 80 to 1000 revolution per minute. The water continues its motion downward under the runner to the exit pipe. The exit pipe discharges the water to the environment as low pressure water. The turbine shaft of the Francis turbines is almost always mounted vertically. This makes discharge of the water much easier due to swirling effect of the water, in the inlet scroll, and the effect of the gravity. The rotation motion of the runner is transferred to an electric generator shown in here. The generated electricity is converted to high voltage current and transferred to the grid to be consumed. One big advantage of the water turbines is that power output can be regulated very easily. If the demand is reduced, the amount of water flowing to the turbine can be reduced relatively short period of time. We thank our client GDF Su as giving us the permission to publish this video. We also thank our viewers for their continuing support of our channel.